Nitrous is cool and awesome, but can you use it in place of your intercooler? In this video, we've got full results on what happens when you run nitrous oxide as the intercooler on your Turbo LS. We've got power, boost, back pressure, and of course, charge temperature. Along the way, we'll also take a look at why intercooling is important, how it makes more power, and how it makes your motor safer. But for now, let's find out just how effective negative 129 degree nitrous oxide is at cooling boost. Okay guys, as you can see, there's been a change from the last clip to this clip. And here's my advice. If you're going to fall on Christmas morning, make sure you don't land on your face. <laughs> now that we've covered that, let's get to the real point. And that's to figure out if we can run nitrous oxide in place of the intercooler on your Turbo LS. Before we do that, we need to understand why we would want to, what intercooling does and how it helps power. So let's go back to the very beginning. Now your motor needs two things to make power. It needs air and it needs fuel in the right proportion, of course, but it doesn't really need air. It needs oxygen, oxygen molecules to be specific. If we take those oxygen molecules and combine them with the right amount of fuel and ignite them, voila, we've got horsepower. Now that we understand how we make power, Let's figure out how we make more. The answer is obvious, more oxygen molecules. And there are a number of ways to get those. You see, every time your motor rotates, it takes in a breath. <gasps> that breath has a given volume. In that volume is a certain number of oxygen molecules. Now, one way to make more power is to take a bigger breath. <gasps> and that simulates a bigger motor. You see, a three liter motor is gonna take a breath. <gasps> A four liter motor is going to take an even bigger breath and a five liter and so on. So each breath that they take is bigger, bigger breath, more oxygen molecules, more power. So a bigger motor makes more power. That should come as no surprise. The other way is to take more breaths. That simulates RPM. I mean, your LS motor makes more power at 6,000 RPM than it does at 3,000, right? So that's another way. The other way, and the final one we're going to talk about today, is to actually increase the number of oxygen molecules that you take for every breath. So you'll gain from both of those, whether it was a bigger motor or you're taking more breaths, more RPM. Either way, you'll make more power if you have more oxygen molecules in that same volume. And that's by cooling the air. Now that we understand it's important to have cold air, because there are more oxygen molecules per given volume, we need to figure out how we cool the air especially on a turbo application. Unfortunately, heat is a natural byproduct of compression. When we compress the air with a turbocharger, we also heat it. But the obvious answer to cool that air is an intercooler. And it doesn't matter whether it's an air to water or air to air, they both function the same way. We're taking that heated charge air and pushing it through something that's colder. It goes in hot and it comes out colder. Maybe the best way to illustrate this is with an example. Okay, here's our example. This is our turbo. This is our intercooler. Let's say that that's an air to air intercooler. We've got 100 degree air going into our turbo. Let's say it's a hot summer day. We're not running very much boost. So the turbo, the temperature of the air coming out of the turbo is 200 degrees. Now, this is an air to air intercooler. So we have this same 100 degree air cooling our cooler. This is what the temperature of the air we're using to cool our air to air intercooler. So we've got 200 going in. We're cooling this with 100 degrees. We're never going to get back down to ambient. It, it'll never be that efficient. But let's say we bring it down to 115 degrees. Now, obviously, 115 is much better than 200. And this gets even better the more boost you run. Because even if this was 300, we might bring this down to, let's say, 140 or 150, depending on how good our air-to-air -air was. But let's take a look at this new example. Let's say we had an air-to-water intercooler, and we were using ice water. So now, this is 32 degrees. So we got 100 going in, 200 coming out, but we're sending it through a cooler that's 32 degrees. So now we could bring that temperature down probably somewhere near, let's say 55 degrees. So now it's even colder than ambient was because our transfer medium was so much cooler. This is an ideal situation. 
So now the question is, if 32 degrees cools it that much, what happens if we use a transfer medium that's negative 129 degrees? Because that's the temperature of nitrous oxide. That's what this test is all about, so let's find out. To test our theory on using nitrous oxide as the intercooler on a turbo LS, we needed a test motor. Now our test motor was a 2008 6-liter LY6. It was a stock bottom end with extra ring gap. We also added ARP head studs and LS9 gaskets. We topped that short block with a set of TFS 225 heads and installed a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 3 Turbo Cam. Additional components included a Dorman LS6 intake, Holley 80 pound injectors controlled by a Holley HP management system. Providing boost was a custom single turbo kit consisting of truck manifolds reversed aiming forward, a custom Y pipe that featured a pair of Gen 5 Turbo Smart wastegates, and a provision to mount any turbo we want using a 3 inch V band with an adapter. Now for this test, we installed a Borg Warner S475 turbo from LJMS. The discharge tube running from the turbo up to the throttle body obviously featured no intercooler, but it did have a threaded boss. This allowed us to install a fogger nozzle from Nitrous Express. The fogger nozzle was designed to combine both nitrous and fuel in a single fogger nozzle and inject it into our inlet tube. Now we also had a thermal couple mounted in the intake manifold to measure the charge temperature. Had we thought about it, we may have moved that farther back in the manifold or even to one of the ports because its position got a good spray of nitrous and fuel and there's definitely going to be a change in temperature. But did that change in temperature continue through the whole manifold into all the ports? And that brings us up to the next question. What about distribution in these long runner manifolds? Now we'd run a test previously with water methanol and we know that's not great in these long runner manifolds. But what about nitrous? Does it suffer from the same problem? What's the distribution like? Don't worry, I've got that question answered for you in a video coming up later where we did a test on distribution using eight individual oxygen sensors. It's good stuff, but that's coming up. Let's get back to our test. We've got everything set up. We've got the turbo, we've got the nitrous, we've got all the thermal couples we need. Let's find out what happened. First we ran the Turbo LS with no nitrous. Then we ran it again after activating the Nitrous Express kit. Here's the result. If we take a look, we ran our 6 liter LY6 modified with the heads and cam Borgwarner S475 Turbo. Run at seven pounds of boost. All we did was have reference lines going to our wastegates with no controller. Made a peak of 7.4 PSI. At that boost level, our six liter produced 723 horsepower. And we'll get to the torque in just a minute. We'll cover that next. If we take a look after we added the Nitrous Express Nitrous Kit to it with 52 Nitrous Jets, power output jumped to 907 horsepower and 885 foot-pounds of torque. Take a look at that. Big jump in power, nice and clean, nice and smooth. Everything worked great. Big power, but we kind of expected that from nitrous. So now let's take a look at the torque curve. If we convert our horsepower to torque, we can see a big spike where the nitrous activated and the torque peak jumped from 641 foot-pounds with no nitrous just 7.4 pounds of boost, to 885 foot-pounds. Now, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna bring up the boost curves because adding the nitrous actually affected how much boost this thing made. Let's take a look. And so here's the interesting thing. If we take a look at the boost curves, we had a nice about seven pounds there. When we activated the nitrous, it's a little jaggy, that's really the reading from the dyno. We activated the nitrous, you can see boost curves identical here. Then the boost jumped up dramatically to a spike of 10.6 PSI up in this area. And then settled down uh, just below nine and a half in here. So we had a jump of almost two pounds of boost just by activating the nitrous. And here's the odd thing. You would think when we activated the nitrous that we increased the back pressure dramatically. Now, extra power, extra exhaust flow, more back pressure, 
that should actually want to open those gates and all they had were reference lines to them with no controller on them. So there should actually be less boost, but the nitrous increased it dramatically. So part of that power output obviously was from the extra boost, which is almost two pounds, but it was cool that we activated the nitrous. We saw a big spike in power and a little jump in boost. So, hey, I'm all for it. Let's take a look at the back pressure now. Okay, if we take a look at this, we see we've got boost pressure down here, around seven pounds. We've got back pressure up here. So at seven pounds of boost, we had a little over 14 pounds of back pressure. So it was about a two to one relationship there with that single turbo. This was before we added the nitrous. This was just running the seven pounds from that S475 turbo. Now let's add the nitrous to it, and this will come up in red. As you can see, we got a big jump and boost. Big jump and boost down here, the red line. But we also got a big jump in back pressure. So as boost pressure went up, so did back pressure. Went up to a peak of about 16 and a half pounds with the nitrous where the boost pressure was about nine and a half pounds. So you can see, boost pressure went up, back pressure went up just as it should, which seems odd that it should have opened the gate earlier, but it did not. It made more power and more boost and more back pressure. So now let's take a look at the all important charge temperature. Okay guys, here are the charge temperature results. During the run at seven and a half pounds, 7.4 pounds, we had a peak charge temperature of 176 degrees coming out of the turbo. This is measured in the manifold right behind the throttle body. And for reference, the air in the dyno cell, the air feeding the turbo was 76 degrees. So it jumped from 76 degrees to 176 degrees. The turbo added about 100 degrees at seven and a half pounds. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we added the nitrous. So the nitrous run was actually a little, a couple of degrees hotter going in, but the big difference is right here. When we activated the nitrous, we saw a big drop in temperature. The nitrous dropped the temperature all the way down to 114 degrees. But if you take a look right in this area here, you'll see the temperature started to rise again. And it actually got over 130 degrees out at the peak. So we saw a difference of only about 45 degrees out of the peak, indicating that nitrous oxide might not be ideal as an intercooler, even though it's negative 129 degrees. The big problem isn't the temperature differential between the nitrous and the boosted air, it's actually the amount of nitrous that you're supplying. You see, think about this, and we're gonna cover this in the results coming up in, uh, at the summary, but think about this, we have you know, over 700 horsepower worth of air going into this motor, but we're only adding what is basically 100 and 125 shot. So if you look at the ratio, the amount of gas going in, the amount of nitrous oxide going in versus the amount of heated air, the percentage is actually very small. So even though it has a lot of temperature differential, even though it's a lot cooler, it just doesn't have enough of it to actually cool the rest of the air. So if we had, if we were running a 500 shot or a thousand shot, then we could really cool the air, but really, you know, the gain you get is from the nitrous itself and not from the cooling agent. Because we also ran this setup with a regular intercooler, an air to water intercooler using ambient dyno water, and it was able to control the temperature much better than nitrous does. Although the gain's not as great because it doesn't have the extra oxygen molecules that nitrous does. But we'll cover all that in the summary. Okay guys, what did we learn from all this? Well, the first thing I learned is if you're gonna fall on Christmas, don't land on your face. Home safety is very important. Actually, what did we learn from the nitrous test? Well, the first thing we learned is, does nitrous work as an intercooler? I mean, it did lower the charge temperature by 40 or 45 degrees, but in my opinion, it's not ideal as an intercooler. And the reason is not because it's not cold. It is, it's negative 129 degrees. The problem isn't the temperature, it's the amount. You see, we have a lot of airflow that's 176 degrees going into our turbo motor. And we only have a little bit of the negative 129 degree compound trying to cool that. If we were to add a ton more nitrous, we'd get a lot more cooling. But the reality is we get a lot more power from just the nitrous. You see, all those extra oxygen molecules that we're looking for from the cold air, 
are already in the nitrous. They're in the compound just waiting to be released in the combustion process. Once they're released, they're free to make a ton more power. And that's what nitrous excels at. If you want to cool your charge temperature on the turbo motor, use an intercooler. It's much more effective, it's always there, and you don't have to activate it. But the ideal situation is to combine nitrous with the intercooler. And I did just that, and I got another video coming up on the results of combining the two. Cold and cold, nothing but good. I've also got a test on nitrous distribution. So if we inject the nitrous, does it get to all the cylinders using 802 sensors? We were able to find out. I got that video coming up. I got 4.8 performance, 5.3 performance, more 6.0 stuff. I got a ton of stuff coming up, guys. So make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all this stuff, help me out so I can keep doing these videos. See you next time.